Hi, my name is Richard, and this is the official tutorial on Logic. Um, we're going to go through the most important things you need to know just to start out. Um, it's, it's a lot of information. I started learning this program a few years ago, and when I started it was very intimidating and kind of frustrating because <clears throat> a lot of this stuff is not intuitive. You need someone to actually show you what the buttons mean. You can't just sit down at it and press buttons and figure it out. Um, but it's taken a while, but I've finally gotten to a point where I know uh, a lot, even though there's a whole bunch more that I still don't know about it. But I'm going to go through the most important things um, in order to actually sit down and start composing. Um, there are a lot of key commands, there are a lot of buttons on the keyboard that I have programmed uh, onto these computers so that uh, these, are the, these are the key commands that I use because I think they're the fastest. Um, some of them are the default key commands and some are not. Um, and so I'll talk about that here in a second. But um, there's, I'll have a list typed up so that you can see um, a list of all these key commands. So you can go back and review them, try and memorize them. And hopefully, um, hopefully as I go along, I'll try and make it so that, so that uh, somewhere on the screen you can see as I say what the key commands are. So just to start out with, um, when you open up Logic, just press Logic down here. And sometimes Logic will give you a box that says what kind of templates do you want to use. Um, all you got to do is click Empty Project, and you'll start out with an empty project. Right now, it's set to a empty project. That's why I just open straight up an empty project. But if you get a box that, that gives you like all kinds of options, like songwriting, uh, mastering, mixing, hip hop, all these templates, just pick an empty one. OK. So the first thing that will happen is you'll get this screen. Let me just resize it. Um, hold on. Um, Hold on, my uh, screen's not resizing. Okay, first thing you'll get this. Just just create a software instrument. Now, the difference between software instruments and audio software is for MIDI. Uh, MIDI are things that you play through, like a keyboard that's hooked up to the computer. So anything that you're playing through a keyboard that's like a MIDI instrument, uh, you're going to use software instruments. Anything with audio <coughs> are things that you don't use MIDI. So for example, if you have anything with a microphone, drums, vocals any guitars um, and anything that's already made and that's like already like an mp3 or an AIF you're gonna use audio um, so let's first create a software instrument external MIDI is a uh, stuff that I never use I never it's for um, using uh, I guess older technology I, I've never tried I don't really understand it quite yet but that's for using big boxes that have lots of older sounds synthesizers and things so just first you just create it, then I'll try and resize my screen. Okay. All right, stuff up here, up on the top right here, I don't hardly ever use. And so we'll just keep it open now, but usually I just click this button and it will give me more space. Um, but one thing we can use it right now is, is go to click on preferences, go to audio. Oh, yeah, and make sure, okay, this is your preferences. This is you might have to mess with this sometimes. If you click on this device, um, if your computer, some of the computers go through an inbox. So when you click on this, you will see an inbox in here. If you click through that, then your sound will be going through your inbox. That means you hook up your headphones to your inbox, and there, that way you can get sound. Um, if it says, I think it's line input, uh, built-in line input, if you click on that and then you apply the changes, then it will be coming through the actual computer, like the cheap mic that's coming through the computer. Um, this is using something else because I have a, another mic hooked in. But that's something else. But so those are basically the two things you need to worry about. <coughs> if you're hooking your headphones into the inbox, click on inbox. If if it's through the computer speakers, click on built-in audio or built-in input. <coughs> and then you just click apply changes. Okay. Okay. Let's go to preferences and then key commands. So this is the box that you get when you open up the key commands. Um, these are, all, I mean, there's a billion of these. Um, these are just, all these things right here are the key commands that you press in order to do shortcuts. So they're, they're essentially just shortcuts. Now how they work, when this blue box is highlighted, whatever note 
or not whatever letter I pressed on the keyboard will tell me while this blue thing is highlighted, it will tell me what that thing is. So I'll press down R, and now it tells me R is assigned as record. So every time I press R in Logic, it will start recording. Uh, if I press F, F down here, that's the toggle of the library. That's to open up the library. If I press S up here, solo mode. Um, <coughs> so just pressing a bunch of, for example, Command T. I'll press Command T, and that is adjust the tempo using region length and locators. This will tell me what all the things are signed to and obviously you can see that not all of them are signed but many of them are um, so if you're not if you're new to Max I was new to Max I never knew Max until I started using Logic um, some of these buttons are very different uh, it's a little confusing and frustrating at first but over time you'll uh, finally get used to it um, if you look over here you have shift control option and command these are the signs that Mac uses so that's what all these funky um, funky symbols are um, so so you can just keep track of that basically with a Mac command is is now your control so if you were to do control Z you do command Z that's how they kind of switch it around that way okay so let's say I don't know what a record is but I want to know how to record up here you can type I'll say what is record so just type in record and it gives me all the commands that are associated with record and I can see I don't want record all for all. I don't know what, what this one or this one. I want this one. And I say, okay, R is it. Or, for example, um, play. Um, there's one right here. Play from beginning. Play from left window edge. There's a couple ones that are associated with play. But as you can see, if, if you want to know how to do certain things, uh, you just type in here and it'll, it'll show it to you. And uh, the list that I give you of all the key commands that I've set up will have the exact wording. So, for example, I will type in play or stop. If you notice right here, that is the exact wording. So I'll type in play or stop, and it only gives me these two that have, you know, this wording. So so the actual wor the actual list that I give you will have the exact wording. If you want to go ahead and change uh, things manu manually, you can. Um, uh, or if you're at a computer that is not set up with these key commands, then you can do it manually. Or your second option is to import it if you don't have it. Now there's there's a file here. I'm going to bring in it. It's right here. Rich key commands. This is the this is what the file looks like. It's a logic file. All you do it's on the desktop right now. All you do is you go here, go to options, import key commands, go to the desktop, and then I would import that thing. Um, and then I just press import and then all my key commands are, are set to those those uh, key commands so that's a faster way um, and this file should be in should be available to you um, so that's it so so the, the key commands just remember the key commands I tell you are not all default key commands they're just the ones that I use and I think they're very fast and efficient so so let's get started here um, Okay, so first thing you do, you just created a MIDI track. Um, first thing, we let's load up a piano. So this thing is called the library, and this is a fast way of getting to instruments. So there are actually three different ways to get to instruments. Uh, there's two ways to get certain instruments, but there's three ways to get there. I'll talk about that in a second. But first, let's just load up real simply acoustic pianos. You got all these pianos to choose from, just pick one. And then your piano should be ready to play. Um, okay, so I'll press R, that's R's to record, and I'll just record a little line. And then I press spacebar to stop. And, uh, and this this is what I get it. And I um, if I press this, here, let me go back to the beginning. And uh, you can just hear how I played it. Okay. Now notice that it played. It recorded exactly how I played it. Exactly how long I hit every single note, how hard I hit every single note, everything. These white bars in here, that's actually my pedal. I'm using a MIDI pedal and so it's recording that information too um, 
Okay, a few things about moving around. Let's talk about navigational things. So there's three different ways to move around. One way, uh, let's see, okay, so, so stop and go is, is space bar. Um, there are other stop and goes. There's zero and there's enter. Uh, zero on your number pad or on the, the numbers up, up above, either one works. So while you're going, zero will stop it and enter, the enter on the far right bottom corner of your keypad will also stop it. Not return, return is a different one. Um, so enter the bottom right corner where the numbers are. Zero and enter will also stop it. The difference between zero and enter and spacebar, you, after you've stopped it, uh, if you press zero again, it will go straight back to the beginning. So two zeros, stop it, go back to the beginning. Enter will stop it the first time. The second time it will go back to the spot that you um, that you last started from. So let's say I start from here. <coughs> okay, I press stop and then I press enter again and it goes to exactly the spot I want. It's very useful, you know, when you're going through projects and you just want to start at a certain spot. You just start it there. I'll start right here. You want to stop and you want to go straight back to that spot. Okay. Um, and there's three ways to to move this this cursor thing. Uh, the first way is to just go over it and you get this thing and then you click and drag it and go back and forth. The second way is to click in this area, in this region. Uh, make sure it's in this skinny region. You don't want to click up here because that's actually for something else. That's for making cycles and loops and it won't move it. So click down here and don't click down here. This is for your regions. This green thing is called a region. Um, Logic holds your, your notes in these little packets called re regions. So I can actually move these, I can, um, I can move them all around. So that's what this area is for. So moving your cursor is, is, is done by moving it in this skinny area. Okay, then the last way to move it is by period and comma. Comma moves it this way, period moves it this way. So it just moves it by these increments. And so there's three ways, like I said, there's three ways to move this cursor. And when you're going along, you press enter twice, it goes to the last way, no matter what are the three, which of the three you use, it'll go to the last one that you, that you used. Okay, and then return, there's an enter on your keyboard and there's a return. Return will go to the beginning and will start playing. So play that, press that once. So there's the difference. Now, how to zoom? Zooming in and zooming out is very important. Um, uh, zooming in, uh, let's see, you have control left and you have control right. You have control up and you have control down. That This is what I use most of the time. Um, now, if you're when you're clicking up in here, make sure that you don't hold it down and drag your mouse up because that will start zooming. If you go up, it'll zoom out if you go down, it will zoom in. Now I never, I never use this because it's it's kind of hard to, it's kind of inaccurate and hard to to use. Um, so I just use this and this usually. Um, there's a third way to to zoom, and I don't use it very often. But with huge projects, I I haven't haven't remembered to use it, but I can use it. And that is to hold down the Option key and to use your mouse. So if I hold down my Option key go up and down and left and right. Now the thing about this one, this one is super, super extreme. Like it will zoom in super fast, uh, as you can see. So it's a little hard to, to control sometimes. That's why I don't use it too often. Um, I usually normally use just control up, control and the arrow keys. Okay, um, if you press F, that will get rid of this, um, this library. So it's not in your way. Um,